Hi everyone, Armored Pants here, and I have another video for you in the French line. This is the Tier 6 RL44 Heavy Tank. Now, as always, you will have a look at the tech spec first, and to do that, you will use Blitzhanger.com, a great asset for all blitzers, and we will also have a look at the in game tech as well. This is a very good heavy tank, I have to say. It's well balanced. I like it, I really enjoyed playing it. Um, one thing I would say is that you need to get the top turret on this ASAP as it transforms the tank. And to illustrate that, let's have a look at the tank in garage. So here's my tank in garage. Let's have a look at my setup. Um, I have it set up. Um, I'm not using calibrated shells, although it is an option for you. It depends, but I prefer using the gun rammer. I like the faster reload, but that's just me. There is nothing wrong with using calibrated shells for this tank. Actually, it's pretty good because the gun is excellent. I use supercharge as well and I use refined gun to lower the dispersion as opposed to vertical stabilizer because it's a heavy tank you don't fire as much when you're moving I prefer to lower the dispersion dispersion basically is the loss of potential energy to kinetic energy when the shell fires so therefore it uh, increases your ability to hit and penetrate the enemy so that's why I prefer it I use enhanced armor because it's a heavy tank improved optics uh, engine accelerator rather than improved control because the engine accelerator gives you faster engine but it also improves the traverse speed rather than just improved control which just gives you increased traverse speed um, and traverse speed by the way is very good in this tank anyway then I use a consumable delivery system I like to use the um, the consumables more often in terms of the shell setup um, I go with way more AP because the pen on this is 212 uh, millimeters on standard AP so it's going to go through most things 14 of uh, APCR in case I'm up tiered and the rest in HE um, now I want to show you why you should get the the, the top turret on this as quickly as possible one you can't mount the um, top guns on, on the lower turret as you can see here so you have to so to go backwards we need to unmount them put on the lower tier gun and then we put on the lower turret now also look at this look at this turret it, you know it transforms the tank I mean this is really the ugly duckling who became a swan this thing here being the ugly duckling man look at it if that was a person to be a 2 out of 10 right but I guess like most people you stick a different head on it and it transforms it completely right so you know so um it's like giving Sarah Jessica Parker you know because she's got a good body giving her a different head you know she's definitely going to transfer transform way from it too because currently she looks like a foot into something else you know she might even end up looking like supermodel so there you go and this tank looks like a supermodel hey look at this now this is uh, what you would expect for something French it's beautiful chic and suave right so get that top turret um, apart from all of those stupid female analogies I used, it just it just allows you to mount the better gun, and uh, of course it looks so much better. So as we said, 212 meters with pen on the AP. I would use supercharger refined gun as we looked at. Uh, the muzzle velocity then increases to 1300 meters per second as opposed to 1000, which is really good. APCR has 1625 meters per second, um, with supercharge up from 1250, and that's really really good at tier six. You've got a 6.74 second reload. And basically, when you're doing 212 to 280 damage points with AP rounds, that's really good. So the DPM of this tank for a tier 6 heavy is really good. And you're going to be able to pen everything in your own tier. And even if you're up tiered with this gun, you're going to be able to pen most things front on with the AP rounds. But load up some APCRs because you will come up against ISs, Tankensteins, things that have really solid armor. So you might need some APC rounds as well. Load up a few has 10 degrees of gun depression 15 degrees of elevation so you can also go go hull down on this because when we look at the armor profile you will see the armor profile is pretty good um, particularly on the uh, front and on the turret so we're going to have a look at that when we look at the armor profile now you'll also notice that this tank has really good power to weight ratio right and this is important because it makes the tank, even though its top speed is not that high, it moves from stop start really quickly, right? So therefore, even though its uh, forward speed is only 37 uh, kilometers an hour, it actually moves very quickly. It accelerates up to that top speed very quickly. And therefore, we look see we see here now at power to weight ratio. Therefore, it is pretty agile and mobile. It also has good traverse speed and if you use um, enhanced control and um, then you actually get some better engine speed and better um, 
traverse speed as well. Um, concealment numbers are not great, but then you don't expect them to be great in a heavy tank. Heavy tanks are not about uh, concealment or view range, right? Um, now, this front armor here is really good, right? Look at this, it is really good. And if you're, by the way, if you've ever come up against this front on and you're in a tier five or in a tier six light or medium tank, it's almost impossible to pen. Even when you uh, load your Pramo, it's front on, it is a monster. Right? You can also side scrape in it too. You, we see here the relative armor numbers at the side are really high. Go into a typical side scraping position here. We can see you're gonna be able to side scrape. Even against tier seven heavies, you're gonna get bounces. Those relative armor numbers are very high particularly if you have a very acute angle on the armor. If you over angle, then something like an IS or something is gonna pen you, right? But if you come out at a very acute angle in this tank, you will be able to side scrape in it. And, um, front on, it is really, really good. Now, of course, I said it's a well-balanced tank, so therefore it does have some weaknesses, right? At the side and at the back, it has virtually no armor. That's why I would run two repair kits. So you will see that when we spin the tank around and have a look, side on, it's easily penned by almost everything. At the back, it's very vulnerable. By the way, if you're up tiered, there is an SU-152 or something like that. He can one shot you with a HE round into the butt. So be careful. If you are up tiered, try to, f try to note where the big guns are on the map before you move out and expose yourself. Run two repair kits in case you are tracked, as you need to be able to move on. You can see here when we look at the sides and at the back, there is a bit of spaced arm on the sides, but it's low down, so it's not gonna protect you that much. Look at the back of the turret, and we'll have a look at the back of the tank here. Now you'll see you've virtually no armor. And like an SU-152 can one-shot you, he can, a thousand, he can get a thousand damage point alpha roll, no problem with his HE round. So just if you are up tiered, please take note. If you're going out into the open, make sure you know where the big guns are if they're already on the red team. This is what we're talking about front on. I mean, this thing looks like a tomato with an erection front on. I mean, just look at that armor profile. Even when you're up tiered to tier seven front on, it's still very competitive. But against tier five and against its peers in tier six, this tank is very effective. In terms of the historical reference, there were a few of these tanks made. Ironically, they were started to build them during um, in France when it was still occupied by the Germans at the end of the Second World War. So it's very interesting, um, very interesting history to this tank. Um, now, in terms of its tactics, um, I would say forget about what it says here. I mean, long range sniping for sure, it's good because the gun is excellent. One of you one brawl, if you get face on to the enemy, if you keep moving and continue to have your armor front on to an enemy in a brawl and with that good reload and good pen on your gun you're going to do very well and in terms of your tactics and what i would do with this tank is if you're top tier you can go front line front on when the armor is facing the enemy this tank is very very difficult to pen it's very intimidating if you're in a tier five or even in a tier six um, when you're front on, when this thing's coming at you front on, it's very difficult to pen. It also moves very quickly. So getting, so even if you have a big gun like a KV-1S, it's difficult, and with a long aiming time, it's difficult to pen this tank because it, it moves quickly, right? And you'll see here when we look in this game that this tank can be really effective when you go front on. If you're bottom tier, then I would suggest you follow your heavies and support them use their armor and use your gun to support them. So it's sort of like standard heavy tank play, but when you're top tier though, you can go way, way um, front line in this, more so than you would with let's say KV-1S or whatever, because unlike KV-1S, you've got a really good reload and you're very intimidating for the enemy. And front on, even though you have that flat plate armor, very difficult to pen. Well, I'm going to B here rather than A. Why? Well, there's two KV-2s on the other team. And it would be a stupid thing to go front on to a KV-2. Even stupider to go front on to two of them. So I want to take them from the sides or back. And as you can see, the KV-2s, as I suspected, have gone to A. So I can, I can capture B. As you saw, when I was moving to B, the tank 
is pretty mobile and as we said even though its top speed is only 37 kilometers per hour and uh, because it has that really good power to weight ratio it gets around the map really well it's almost like a medium tank in terms of its maneuverability indeed it's as agile as some uh, medium tanks at tier six so we see here now we've captured b um, I do not want to go front on our uh, to, to those KV2s. That's why you really need to check the red list, I uh, check the setup at the start of games, uh, so that you don't run into trouble there. Because even though I've got good frontal armor, the KV2s would fire HE at me. They're going to get three to 400 alpha rolls probably, and uh, two shots from them, and they're going to kill you. Just a quick look there, that gun I told you has really good gun handling. You see there, um, I'm up against the KV-2 with a very big gun, but he has a long aiming time. Nothing like the gun handling I have, so I'm able to pop one into him and then move to safety. Now we're up against a Nightmare. I take one in the side here in the middle of the crossfire, but I'm going to clear him and move into safety. Um, and now I'm going to come up on the sides and back of these KV-2s, which is where you want to be taking a KV-2 from. Um, and by the way, you know, you see people in games saying things like you're a coward and this i mean how one can possibly be a coward in a pixelated tank game i have no idea i mean it's not like you really feel any pain or you're really gonna die so that's probably one of the most nonsensical things that people could ever say but when i but there is no point in being stupid and going front on to a kv2 is a stupid thing take it from behind the sides is what you want to do now Remember what I was saying earlier up against that frontal armor, look at that. The KV-1S is one of the biggest, most powerful guns at tier 6. But he just bounces off the front of that because I show him an angle on that front plate. Nice bounce there. Um, a huge bounce actually. So really the only damage I've taken so far in this game is nothing front on. It's only at the sides and the back, which is exactly as we discussed in the tech spec. Put a nice round into the p43 i'm gonna roll back i'm gonna come front on to him again i'm not really so worried about him another bounce from him when i'm front on i can always bounce shots uh, as i said really front on this thing is really really effective now i'm going to take the fight to the vk3601 again i'm confident i have a better reload than him but you're going to see here though this is the uh, buff in action here on the uh, on the uh, vk3601 there you see the bounce off the lower plate that's the buff in action this time i decided to track him and pull him by hitting the drive wheel like that you pull him to the side and deflect his shot now, if you're wondering what happened here if you look closely there you'll see a shell fires by in front of me and i thought that was the vk that fired but actually it was my ally that fired, so that's where I went straight out and got smashed by him. Um, so during the gameplay, I actually thought it was the uh, VK that fired, but actually my ally firing at the VK. So that's why I uh, went straight out in front of him and took the full weight of his big gun into my side. Now here, I am going to trust my armor again. So you're going to see multiple bounces here from the VK28 and the Panzer 4G. Now look, I know one of them is lower tier and I know the VK28 uh, only has a 75mm gun, the same as the Panzer. But just look how effective that frontal armor is. I don't even really have to do that much. Just keep the front of the tank facing them. I'm taking hits, I know from the P43, I know he's to the side, but I know I have enough hit points to let him take a couple of shots at me and then I clear him off. So that was sort of a calculated risk. Um, I knew I was going to have at least one, but maybe two shots uh, on him at the end. So there we go, mastery badge, over 3.5k damage. If any tank, any tier 6 tank, you can do 3.5k damage, it has to be good. Massive carry for me, 4 kills. Um, and you can see there that poor VK was actually a good player on their team, but he was just tormented. And of course, I did the right thing. I was facing onto him. Maybe what he should have done at the end, instead of running away from me, was actually try to circle a death me. But it's difficult to deal with the Arl because it is quite a, a good traverser and quite a good brawler. So we see here, um, damaged or spotted most of the enemy team. So a pretty good performance all around, very good team performance for me. I captured bases, cleared off the big guns, and just, you know, nothing spectacular, but just intelligent play. At the start, not going onto those KV-2s front on, and that's why it's so important to read the setup at the start. 
so that you make the right decisions at the start of the game steel wall as you can see again as i said when you're top tier you can be a bully you wouldn't get that if you were of course bottom tier then you need to have play a different uh, style supporting your heavies not going front on and um, top gun metal as well high caliber and the uh, mastery badge as well as you would expect when you do so much damage in a tier 6 game but a good illustration i think of how effective the arrow can be um, especially when you have that top turret and top gun it makes it a very very different tank a very effective tank now let's recap this is a very good heavy tank i think it's well balanced a great frontal arm but of course it has some weaknesses the frontal arm i'd say is almost troll and if you're top tier you can be a real bully as i was in that game you know you can go front line without fear it's agile and mobile due to that part weight ratio you can see it got around the map really well in that game and it's great gun handling you're going to get 212 to 280 damage points and a 6.7 4 second reload and really good gun handling with it so the gun system is really good 1300 meters per second muzzle velocity with supercharge which is really good for tier 6 heavy 10 degrees gun depression so you can go hull down too if that uh, if the option presents yourself so that's a tactic you can also use um, but if you're top tier front on front line uh, it just you just go for it you can you can have confidence in the front line with this tank 212 millimeters of pen with ap which is great 259 millimeters of pen with apcr so you can pen anything even if you're up tiered and um, you will need for a tank and stein or something like that apcr so make sure you load some up but watch your sides but they are vulnerable um as we saw in that game the music is uh, sancien danse macabre or macabre dance which is a great piece of music and of course the can can from offenbach's orpheus in the underworld both french masterpieces uh, which goes with this free, brilliant french tank so i guess all remains for me to say is cheers much and um, thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it i hope you found it useful and i will say for now pants off